Good evening. You are welcome to another edition of Import Export Platform, Facebook Live from Trade Team Pest Trade Academy. Um, <laughs> I'm in another location. <laughs> uh, all right. I'm not in the office today. Sorry, I missed the morning session because I was in transit, actually. I went for a program organized by UK Aid to reach out to the people in the southeast of Nigeria. You know, I, 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 and it was interesting seeing the southeastern of Nigeria, the great work they are doing in this part of the world. Um, they are, I mean, Abba, actually, I mean, Abba. And um, I, 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 you see a lot of work being done, the leather work being done. You see a lot of work being done, the um, clothing, the garments being done, and a lot of effort going on and the support of the government, which can be more, but I mean, at least reasonably, I think the government is putting in some effort there, if it's commendable from all that I heard. Um, and what we'll be doing here basically is to talk to them about market entry, which is one of the things we've been discussing or we'll be discussing in the course of the uh, session on starting and managing export business part 25. And we are looking at pricing, 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 pricing. It's interesting to note that pricing is a extremely critical part of any business. Now, it's so interesting and so important that it could be the reason why some people will not do the business or why they will do the business. It's so important also to note how vital this pricing is. Because the goal of a business is to be profitable, even though the purpose of a business is to create value. And I've often emphasized severally the fact that you should not allow the purpose to be pushed to the background and focus on the goal. And that if the purpose is really achieve the goal will be inevitable if you are creating value the goal which is to make profit will be inevitable as long as you are creating value as long as people around your customer can see that you are creating value i can assure you the goal is inevitable the goal is inevitable the goal is inevitable the goal is inevitable pricing has been said to be undoubtedly one of the very important factors to determine to be time in international trade. And I often say that if I get 10 calls in a day on inquiry on export, 50%, at least 50 to 60% will be on getting buyer. About 20 to 30% will be on pricing and others, the remaining 20, 20 to 30%. Uh, the remaining 20 to 30%. Now, why is that so? That is so because Pricing is the next in line after the buyer has appeared, after the buyer is known. What will determine if the go ahead is pricing? But I'm of the opinion that if you are doing FMCG, don't put pricing ahead. You know, in export, you need to find other means, other reason for the business. People have different objectives. Don't let your primary objective only be pricing. I'm not discounting need for pricing, a profit rather. So what I'm trying to say is that, let me give an example. When we started exporting to the UK, PAP, the first shipment we made was at the price, I think it was about two pounds. The buyer dropped their prices. The competitor dropped their prices. Second shipment we made, we had to drop to one pound 70. What am I trying to say? We drop our price or prices because the competitor dropped their prices and we want to ensure we enter the market. That dropping of price was not, was not profitable for us, but we had an idea. The idea is, can we enter this market first of all? And our objective, okay, as a business, our objective goes beyond profit. Our objective is to show people that this thing works, the market exists, you can assess this market. So we have other objectives. Like I said, you should be looking for other objectives. If the only objective, the sole objective of your business is just to make profit, you might have issue along the line. 
there must be other ideology driving that business much more than making profit. The beauty at the end of the day is this the ideology will still help you to make profit. You're still going to make profit in the long run, only that the challenge you will have at the beginning, the sitting problem, the bell curve you have at the beginning, the dip you have at the beginning, the negative you have at the beginning, you will be able to carry through. If it's something you love to do, if you're passionate about it, you'll be able to carry through. If you have other independent objectives, so that means I'm not making profit, but I'm achieving other objectives. So for us at that time, the objective was to ensure we conquer the United Kingdom, be able to ship there and get our client to ship there and be able to show our client how to ship there. And we achieved it. Even though it was not very profitable, but we achieved our objective. But today it's profitable. Today is profitable, even though it was not profitable at the time we started. What am I trying to say, basically? I'm trying to talk about the fact that don't dwell so much on profit and lose sight of the ultimate objective. Now, if you don't have any other objective, that business has a lifespan. If you don't have any other objective, if there's no other analogy driving you, the only thing driving you for this business is the money you want to make, that business has a lifespan. In a short time, it will be over. Because you will jump out. Because I will challenge you that will make you not to make the profit, maybe along the line, maybe at the beginning or at the middle or somewhere along the line, and you will jump out because your objective is just to make profit. And I'm saying, even though your goal is to make profit, have other objectives, have other reasons, have other bases for you doing this business. And it is not just for exports, generally, generally, generally. And this explains the reason why a lot of businesses really, act, I mean, do not last long at all. Because people quickly jump from one business to the other. Because the goal is just to make profit. Now, I'm not saying you should be making losses. I'm saying, okay, like the one I told you about, we did the first shipment. It was profitable. The next shipment was not profitable. So we have to now negotiate with our partner and see how we can reduce some of the cost so that we can make it a little bit profitable, at least. So can achieve our objective. So even though the second shipment was not profitable, it didn't stop us from shipping. Rather, we look for ways to make it be profitable in future by looking for a way of reducing the cost, reducing logistics in the product, and we're able to achieve it eventually. Probably not making profit as much as we have made before, but the fact is that we're able to achieve it. We're able to achieve it. We're able to achieve it. Unlike local trade, a lot of other factors need to be put into consideration when selling any product in the export market, a lot of other factors. A lot of in local trade, you have issues, a particular set of factors or things to consider. If you have to consider 10 things in local trade, in export, you're going to consider 10 plus X, <laughs> where X is undefined depending on your mode of shipment. Factors to consider. Now, there are businesses in Nigeria today who have started exporting. Who were not exporting before or not taking export serious before? They are not exporting, they are not just exporting their own product, they are exporting commodities that they don't produce from, from bush, cash nuts, cash aqua, and the like. And the objective is now this kind of company, if it's not making profit, it won't even bother as long as it's not making losses. Even when they made losses, they still continue. And I'm sure they're still doing it today. This company decided to go into cash nut export. And to export their own product solely for the purpose of generating foreign exchange. It's a company that imports raw material in billions of naira in Nigeria for production of their finished goods. For production of their finished goods. For production of their finished goods. Hundreds of billions. That's hundreds of millions, rather. Billions of naira every year. That's a billion, billions of dollars, actually. <laughs> billions of dollars actually probably important up to like maybe like maybe about five percent of total export of nigeria billions of dollars <laughs> but where am i going because of the massive volume of what they produce so look at consumption what am i trying to say i'm basically saying that a lot of businesses do what they do, not necessarily because of profit. And like I said, if the sole objective 
of your coming into export or doing whatever business you're doing, it's just profit. That business have a lifespan. So for export, there are other considerations you have to put into play. However, many new entrants into the export business find it very difficult in setting the appropriate price because of inadequate information on all the other cost elements that are often in cure in the export process. Many do not know, and that's okay. In fact, the essence of being in Abba this time is to come and talk to them about export. And we'll be able to discuss some of these pricing issues. And this is very important. So now, for a new entrant, since pricing is difficult to, to set, what that means is that there is a knowledge gap that needs to be filled. I've accepted. There's something I want to do, and I'm unable to do it. I basically go for knowledge. I basically go for knowledge. I just believe it's a knowledge gap issue. It's a knowledge gap issue. And then I basically look for that knowledge. Accept my ignorance, because ignorance is a gift. It keeps everybody humble. So ready to learn. Ignorance is a gift. Everybody learn from everybody. Everybody learn from everybody. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a gift. It's a gift that keeps everybody humble to want to learn from everybody. And every day you pay for your ignorance. When your phone is having an issue, you went to fix it, you pay for your ignorance. Your car is having an issue, you went to fix it, you pay for your ignorance. <laughs> your laptop is having an issue, you went to fix it, you pay for your ignorance. Every day, all of us pay for our ignorance. And that's what makes life interesting. Interdependence. You know, there's one thing I found out among us in Africa, in Nigeria, learning to work together is a challenge. There's this thing about there is this thing about individualism at the expense of collectivism. For the Asians, they've mastered it. And because they've mastered it, it has helped them to grow. So they will even prize us out. The product they are selling to us, they got in our country, they will price us out. They are the major seller of our product. They will price us out. Why? They are able to do that solely because they have been able to do things together. If we don't learn to do things together, it becomes very difficult for us to make it. Especially for SMEs. When you do stuff together, you minimize challenges of pricing. You know why? You grow volume. With volume, you can negotiate better rate. You grow volume. With volume, you can get better pricing. So even the cost of logistics, cost of shipment, documentation, every cost you incur along the line is shared. So the weight is not too much on one person. The weight is not too much on one person. And when there are issues of losses, it's also shared. <laughs> so one person is not carrying the whole risk. Story is told of the way Asian take over Nigerian African food market in the UK. How they will come together, raise money together, maybe 1,000, 1,000, 1,000 pounds, 4,000 pounds to set up a shop. As they sell, you know, they pound, plow by the money, plow by the money. After, after the, maybe, maybe the money has grown up to $10,000, can give another one of them 5,000 to go and set up one of the shops. Again, 5,000 pounds. 5, so before you know it, they now have four shops or four supermarkets or four locations. But they will still go and buy together. 
and then it's evident so they are holding the market they are holding the, so there is this togetherness among them and even the jews also but for africans we just want to be on our own coming back to pricing pricing becomes a lot easier when we are together in terms of cost of the goods you want to ship but basically like i said for you to know how to price you need to learn it because to price you need to have a critical understanding of all the cost element involved in your transaction it's either you learn it by accident sorry by learning along the way and make mistakes or you go for knowledge the whole idea of knowledge is what someone else probably learned making mistakes what someone has already recessed spending days, months, weeks, and years to do, you are learning it in few hours or few days. So you are able to jumpstart, you are able to come. In fact, what basically reading, learning does is it, may, it, it, it shortens, it reduces your error rate and shorten the time of execution. So I would recommend you learn. You know, we have a diploma program in export business management that can help you to learn. We have a diploma program in export trade finance that can help you to learn. We have a lot of books, DVDs, all on trade that will help you to learn. So you can learn. <laughs> I will try to talk about it now. Um, you know, some people will say, ah, Daily, we don't have money to come out. I think your train, your train is expensive. Okay, trading pairs by virtue of his CSR is doing training free of charge every day on Facebook for everyone that care to learn. Every day we are on Facebook. And what are we doing? We are basically talking to people about the same thing people come to pay for. We are on part 25. If you tell you I'm part 25, that means we've done 24 episodes already. That is massive. That is massive. That could only have been done because of our genuine interest in growing this sector in Nigeria. And we, are, we have singleness of purpose on this. We are very serious on this. Anybody that has been following us know that in terms of this, we are not joking at all. We're extremely serious on contributing our own quota to the growth and advancement of trade in Nigeria. We are very, very keen on contributing our own quota to the growth and advancement of trade in Nigeria. And we know for a fact, we know for a fact that for trade to grow in Nigeria, people must learn. And see, many people have refused to go and do the learning and complaining that they, they, that they is expensive, treating pests are graciously. Gracious. <laughs> treating pests have graciously started this thing for many weeks now, since early part of this year. We now have hundreds of videos online. done free of charge for people to be able to learn how to go about exporting nigeria as i say it's the csr of trading pests and we are happy to do it we're very much happy to do it we're very very much happy to do it <laughs> we're very very much happy to do it it's our own contribution and quota to the growth and advancement of nigeria and we are very passionate about the growth of africa not just nigeria africa as our trade is concerned we just hope that nigeria will take advantage full advantage of the opportunities that Africa presents to us, that we do not allow myopic views to hinder us from benefiting from the current African continental free trade agreement. In principle, there are three basic factors that determine the limit of products pricing in a country, and this include the cost, anything below this, we generate a loss because it's the minimum, the cost. That's the minimum price, the cost price. The lowest price. Lowest price is the price from which 
you can now generate profit. At lowest price, you can generate profit. At cost, you're not generating profit, probably at a loss. Highest price is normally set by the competition. Highest price is normally set by the competition. How far, if your product is very good, very great, everybody wants it, how far you will go in the market in terms of your pricing will be determined by what your competitors are offering. I told you, our pricing was at par. No, it was not even at par. It was actually higher than the competitor. I'm talking about the path we shift to the UK. Now, our now we didn't make our want to be at par because our packaging was far, far, far better than theirs. And we also believe our quality was better. So our price was better. But they dropped their price. We dropped our price. We didn't drop to our level. We didn't drop to their level. We just also come down close to that. Maybe about 1.2 or 0.3 uh, pound difference. So competition set your price. <laughs> <laughs> and please, I've said this on this program when we started early in the year that competitor for you as a fast moving consumer good seller is not just person selling your type of product, <laughs> person selling any product that someone can buy instead of buying yours, even though it's not in the same category. For example, I'm selling snack. Okay, I'm exporting pop, pop, and tea and coffee. Competing. Some people will drink pap to be able to increase internal heat. So also coffee. So also tea. <laughs> so also coffee. So also tea. So I'm competing with people with pap and tea. I'm competing with people with pap and tea. I am competing with people with pap and tea. And I recognize that already. I don't deceive myself. I recognize that already. Beyond the people selling pap. So if you are selling snack, maybe you are selling plantain chips. You are competing with people selling chin chin. You are competing with people selling maybe granite or peanut. As long as they are buying it for the sake of just snack, you are competitors. Not necessarily selling the same product. Whatever you want to call them, direct or indirect competitors, but the disposable income or the purchasing power that a potential buyer will have used to buy yours to derive the same satisfaction, to derive the same goal, they will buy another one. That is a competitor. <laughs> so check a competitor and assess your competitor comprehensively. Don't just assume. It's a little sell. Say, ah, I don't have competitor. My product is unique. Nobody is selling it. Mm. Mm, well done. Well done. Nobody is selling it. Now I'm telling you, they don't need to sell exactly what you're selling. As long as the people that are buying yours are buying yours for one reason and for the same reason they will buy theirs, that is your competitor. <laughs> that is your competitor. Companies often have pricing policy based on certain goals. You know, I've been saying this. You need to have a goal. I mean, define your goal. Why are you doing what you are doing? It's very important you have a goal. It's very important you have a goal. It's extremely, extremely important you have a goal. What is driving what you are doing? <laughs> what is driving what you are doing? Uh, it's very important you have a goal. Beyond profit. Beyond profit. Beyond profit, beyond profit. Now, for some people, a profit on investment made is the goal for export. For some, a winning position in the market is just good enough. For some, coping with the competition is just good enough. For some, stabilizing pricing and margin it's also important to note that price is a variable of three major factors. Three major factors drive prices. Number one, the cost of the goods. Number two, 
the demand for the goods. Number three, the competition on the goods. The cost, the demand, the competition. The cost, the demand, competition. The cost, the demand, competition. So ask yourself as you are pricing, what is the cost of this product? Number one, is the product, does it have a demand? What's the value of the market? Who are those buying? Why are they buying? What are they using it for? What's the volume being procured? The demand. When you check the value of export, it gives you an idea what the demand is. And then what are the competitors saying? Remember, 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 competitors are not just the same for selling similar products. <laughs> competitors are beyond people selling similar products. Competitors are people selling other products that a prospective customer will purchase to derive the same uh, 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 objective or goal as your product. As your product. The most common method to determine price is to add margin to the production cost. That's very common, but that's not good enough because that does not, that will not put into consideration other costs that your own cost, your indirect cost of going to the port, to the warehouse, your own indirect cost, labor cost, your own indirect cost, personnel cost, apart from the raw material and the factory, which many people focus on. From this criterion is the break even theory, the break even point theory which basically focus on what we just talked about. The break-even means that the income covers the variable and the fixed cost. This is not an exact method to set pricing, but it does enable one to determine the amount the product is to be sold without incurring losses. I will still continue pricing tomorrow, probably continue pricing maybe till, till Friday, go from what I'm seeing here, I want to talk for pricing for a while. We need to talk for pricing for a while. I will need to talk about for pricing, about pricing for a while. Maybe for another two, three sessions. Thank you very much for listening today. Remember this import export platform, Facebook Live from Trinity Impressive Academy. My name is Dili Ayimibo, and I'll be seeing you tomorrow morning again, most likely early, because I have a session about by eight. So hopefully 7 a.m. tomorrow we should see to discuss again starting our managing export business part 26 and we'll be discussing pricing bye for now